talking about version yeah. 13. We'll share more of that. But this was, I thought, an important story. Um, this yeah. is uh, the concept about the cyber cabs not needing logos. Just like Cybertruck, Cybercab has no Tesla logos anywhere. Elon replied to that, saying, if the product is special enough, no logo is needed. That's interesting, of course. And then, of course, you said, believe it or not, in a bill of materials, cost planning, logos, badges have no functional need, yet have outside costs. So you're saying that this, just the logo itself is expensive. They're typically electroplated, high polish for looks, et cetera, which have low yields and high costs. Well, it's a brand, Jeff. It's high yield, but yeah, it doesn't need it. Yeah. Yeah, I, I I can't tell you. I mean, for two decades and have this debate, and I'm sure at points in time I was I was wrong, and, and it was the right answer to go and and polish this badge and make it look beautiful and spend. I mean, people would be surprised at how much money on a smartphone or a tablet sometimes that, that would be spent on some of these features. You see that you have some sort of shiny chrome look. Some you know, and these in the processes involved. So think of the badge that's going on the back of your Tesla, or the or the front logo, and think of that polished look. And if you look at the underlying substrate under it, if it's some sort of composite, if it's some sort of you know glass filled plastic, and then you're doing some sort of either electroplating or vacuum metalization operation to give it kind of that metallic look, or is it a chunk of metal, um, and it's being polished? I mean. In any one of these examples, it is a high cost part and there's actually no functionality to it and it's adding mass and drag to the vehicle. Uh, so it's interesting that this realization that Elon and the Tesla team have come to, which is make a product, We and people have been asking about Cybertruck, why isn't there a logo on it? What's going on? Make a product that's so iconic that it it earns its its understanding of what its brand is and what the product is by just its form factor and its look being so stunning and that there's nothing like it. And, and that's, and that's the actual badge and that's the actual brand and then save yourself the several dollars of bill of material. And also think of the transformation cost. People always think of like, okay, I got the badge in my hand. That's what it cost. No, you know, you most likely didn't make that at Tesla. So there was some inbound freight involved and there was packaging involved to get it from the supplier mm -hmm. over to you. And then the supplier has yield loss because this is a high gloss or, you know, a, a polished look. And therefore there's significant yield loss, you know, in the process of making the part. So you're paying for that yield loss. So now they've shipped you the part. You're paying for the shipping material. You're paying for the form of freight that it came into you. So now you're paying for that inbound freight. And then you've got the badge in your hand saying, well, I've got to get this on my vehicle. I need uh, I need to apply adhesives. So you're, you, now you have an adhesive application process that you're putting on, on the badge. And then you're physically putting on the vehicle. And then you've got probably have some sort of alignment operation in the factory. And then you've got a test to validate uh, optically the alignment of it in the factory. So when you think of the total cost, you put the you put the item in the center and you start going around it and you start thinking about the total cost of it. And then all of a sudden, are some of these things having an issue in the field? Are they peeling up or they're whatever? And there's a warranty cost. Now there's a warranty line that hits it as well. And all these different lines of cost that hit it that you don't see when you're holding the physical badge, that's yeah. what the idea of of part elimination and why it's so important. And I think, you know, we'll be talking more about this as more of the cyber cab details are revealed, but I think that's kind of the core efficiency premise of, of, of what they're doing. So I think that's, it's an interesting yeah. just revelation. If, you, if you're making millions and millions, 10 million, it does add up. And he's talked about that before. And then you can also wrap these vehicles. Okay. So we got a, it's a big story here. Next is um, this, uh, this new video that Omar from Homar's catalog put out. I did not think FSC 13.2 could be able to get into the road with this UPS truck parked right next to it. A bunch of engineers uh, replied to this. So let's watch this video. This is Omar parked. The, the car is autonomous right now. You just press the button. There's a biker road by and there's the UPS. How does he even know, right? Like this is a parked car. You can see that it's actually can see the truck there and it uh 
Is it, is it waiting for something? Oh, okay. Oh, boy. <laughs> another, waiting for the Waymo. Another oh, Waymo. How did it see? How can it see? So it, has, it needs to peek out. It needs to peek out. That's great. I mean, first of all, to have the confidence to know that that's a parked vehicle, I'm going to go have to go around it. And then uh, it was able to see that there's nothing there. So that is great. Uh, you know, um, great, great that it worked. That's brilliant. Okay. So what happened was uh, Elon uh, forwarded this in a forwarded in addition to another drive that he, uh, Omar did 13.2 driving an hour and a half, 40 minutes without with zero intervention. Elon said, demonstrate Tesla self-driving to a friend tomorrow feels like magic. Um, Tesla forwarded that image, that video that we just played here. And they said this, this all happens implicitly within the model, which is trained on extensive data of similar real world scenarios. Like it learned it on its own to know what to do there. Um, and then Yun Ta Tsai, who is an engineer for the Tesla autonomy team, this is the power of real world AI. It always surprises me how much it could learn. So this is just reinforcing to you that this, you know, technology is learning on its own. This Viv uh, says this has good teachers in you guys. He says, that's how kids learn. They learn from the real world, not just by reading books. The more they explore, the better they are. You know, you've got engineers here telling you that <laughs> the more the cars are out there, they're learning on themselves. This is a, a live. This guy said, Tesla FSE has gotten so good, I basically stopped driving. I just don't know what to do with my hands now. What do I do with my hands when I don't need to place it on the steering wheel? And I just found this very interesting. Ashok Swami put this GIF out. This isn't even my final form. It's just this confidence coming from Ashok. Whoa, that he was like, this is pretty boastful saying, this isn't even my final form. Just wait till you see how good it's going to get. And Elon said, not even close to final form. What's your thoughts on that? I mean, Tesla's on the edge of solving something. I mean, we've been driving cars for you know, over a hundred years manually. And Tesla's on the verge, and, and in the future, nobody believes that cars are going to be just exclusively driven manually. They're, it's going to be the exception. It's not going to be the rule. It's a question of uh, between where we are today and getting there, like, how do you get there? And Tesla knows that they're on the verge of, of solving this. And I think that's where you're seeing all the confidence and you're seeing all the statements and and I think there's there's more to come in terms of the size of the model that that's available to the vehicle. I, I still think we're we're seeing a kind of a restricted set of so you, you're, they're training on this on this cluster in Texas, but we still haven't seen kind of the full kind of model size maximizing everything uh, on AI four. And remember, Tesla even said today that they can't buy uh, an inference computer. You know, the value per dollar in terms of you know. It's processing. They can't. They can't buy anything better on the open market today. And this computer was designed a number of years ago, just to kind of give you an idea of the lead. And of course, the AI five computer is under development. It's probably complete. And they're just they're getting ready for you know for tape out and going through the final stages and getting ready for production uh, for availability at some point next year. And so Tesla's, you know, they're going to make that even more powerful. But Tesla's doing this inside of a box. And that box is, it's got to be this size. It's got to be this power consumption. It's got to have this capability. It's got to have this redundancy. And, and, and it's got to have, it's got to fit inside of this price point. And, I, and all of these things have to work together. That's the only way that you could have Elon referred to tens of millions of these things being out there in the wild and being able to give 24 uh, seven rides. The only way that this works economically is if you figured out those things with AI four and AI five from a cost structure and power consumption, power consumption perspective, where you can actually just take this cost embedded inside of every vehicle. And whether the consumer buys the option or not, you're still making the gross, the gross margins and operating margins you need to fund the cyclical growth of this business and to expand into, you know, full on AI. So it's interesting how all these things are connected. They all have to work together. If Tesla wasn't making EVs profitably. They wouldn't be able, this computer would be on the delete list. Like, okay, well don't put the computer until we can figure out how to, got to get it to drive. Well, no, if Tesla figured out a long time ago, how to get the margins right in the vehicle and saying we can put this in 
regardless. And I've seen other Chinese auto companies, they've torn down and they've looked at their own solution between the sensor suite and the computer. And they're four to five times where Tesla probably is. So just the point is, is all this has to work together and you can tell Tesla, Tesla's confidence is growing. They're definitely seeing things that we, we've we not seen or experienced yet on the outside. Yeah, we're getting very, very exciting. We're seeing movement in the potential Model Q. We've got movement in FSD, of course. That might go wide before the end of this year. you got the confidence from everybody. And we're seeing that this potential for CyberCab as well. Thank you so much, Jeff. Follow him on his X account, the Jeff Lutz. Use his referral code link and um, subscribe to him on X. Thanks, everybody. Bye-bye. Thank you. I've created a website that is the most comprehensive resource for the Tesla investor. Please check it out. Simply go to my website at herbertong.com.